Hey folks, KG here. So on the table today we have the spider coat tenacious. As always, I'm going to talk about my opinions of this knife, what I think are the good and the bad points, and my overall recommendations at the end. So starting off with some size comparisons, so you have an idea of how big this knife is. Um, it's a full-size knife, so as you can see, here it is against the CVV Elementum, which is, comes out to a bit around an inch shorter. And here it is against the CVV Praxis, which is a big boy over here comes in about an inch longer as well um, compared to the Tenacious. Now let's move on to some Spyderco comparisons. Uh, here it is against the Paramilitary 3. Um, it's about half an inch shorter compared to our Tenacious over here. And here it is against the Spyderco Smock, um, which is Again, about half an inch longer over here and in terms of blade length. Okay, so um, I'd say the Tenacious is a full-size knife. Uh, it's not big and it's not a small knife either. Um, let's maybe compare it against some everyday items. Uh, so here's the knife folded against a standard Zippo lighter over here. Um, so as you can see, uh, it's a bit taller than that. And here it is against a standard bifold wallet. And as you can see, it's just about the length of your standard wallet when it is in fold when it's folded. Okay. Anyway. Um, so can I just start by saying that I really like the name? Tenacious. So fierce. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Um, starting off with the uh, aesthetics of the knife, because really, if you don't like the look of it, you're not going to buy it, right? Um, so I think the knife looks pretty good. Um, it has a very non-threatening looking blade, um, added on by the fact that I chose the cutlery shop orange color. Um, makes it kind of cute, actually. Um, the tip is, doesn't look very stabby. Really, because if you notice at the spine of the knife, it sort of tapers down towards the tip. Um, so it gives it a more subdued look. And the fact that it has a huge belly over here makes it look non-stabby at all. If going on to the branding and the knife, you have the Spyderco logo over there. Um, if I can get this to focus. Yeah, so you have the spider code name right there and HCR 13 MOV, which is the blade steel. And I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, over here, not much branding on the blade, which I like, um, aside from the made in China over here. So yeah, this is a China made knife. Um, spider code generally, well, they have factories all over the world, really. Um, so their China factory comes out with their more budget steels or budget lines, which the uh, Spider Tenacious is part of. Um, that's where they come up with the birds and the Tenacious lines of knives um, compared to your uh, Colorado factory, which the paramilitary family is made out of. Um, sorry. Here. As you can see, it's made in Golden Colorado, USA Earth. All right? And they also have the Taiwan, Taichung Taiwan factory where the smock was made. Um, I can get that to focus. There, as you can see, it's made in Taichung, Taiwan, where they come up with their more uh, premium lights. So, going back uh, onto the handle, as you can see, it has a very nice, clean look. I really appreciate the fact that they use flathead screws over here, so it gives it a nice, flush look. Um, and, and, and you don't really see any of the screws protruding over here. Um, the pivot is nice and polished as well, which gives it a nice minimalist look. And the lanyard hole is just right size. You don't get that um, oversized lanyard holes that you see in some of the other spider clothes. Going on to the clip side. So over here you have a polished hourglass clip. Um, Generally, I like the clips that Spyderco comes up with. They don't create hot spots when you hold them in your hand. 
<coughs> excuse me um and i i like that they chose to put the lanyard hole in the middle of the clip screws that way it gives it a nice clean look as well and symmetrical um similarly the screws are they use flatheads um the only thing that i would have changed i guess is um they use a button head screw over here which kind of yeah so i just wish they use a more stylized pivot um, obviously they can't use this because you need to be able to adjust the pivot um something like what they have on the cvvs where uh, the pivot is a bit more stylized just to give it a bit more character and improve the overall look um, over here in the back you see the knife has full liners with uh, open construction um, pillar construction actually and without any backspacers so that's good in the sense that you know you don't get a lot of dirt or gunk stuck in the stuck in the well stuck inside because um, if you have a backspacer which is really just a, either a piece of plastic or a piece of metal that's over here um, tendency is you'll get a lot of pocket lint or dust or debris stuck inside which will be tough to clean so with an open open back construction you can just get a, a standard q-tip you know, jam it in there and clean up um, whatever leftover debris or pocket lint you have um, for your daily carry um, so that's the aesthetics um, again I think it looks pretty good uh, nice clean lines very minimalist look um, so yeah uh, moving on to usability um, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is the blade if you notice unlike compared to uh, more traditional blade shapes which is pretty much straight uh, the blade of the tenacious is sort of leaning forward um, that's a good thing in the sense that when you're doing your cuts, um, here, let me demonstrate. So <clears throat> when you bear down on it and you to cut something, basically the knife blade, uh, the apex of the belly is in contact with your cutting surface, um, same as your knuckles. So, um, unlike other knife or blade shapes where you kind of have to, you know, chop down a little bit. This one, you all need to do is bear down on what you want to cut, and it hits your cutting surface right there. Um, since the belly is over there, it can also do some of your rocking cuts, um, like in food prep, or you can just, you know, chop down on whatever you want to cut. So that's good. Um, the spider hole is a little bit sharp at the edges over here, so it, it might. It, it, it can well it can hurt a little bit actually when, when whenever you open and close the knife um, and scrape off the skin so what you can actually do is you can just get a um, sharpening rod and sort of chamfer those edges make it a bit rounder a bit softer that way it doesn't hurt when you use it day to day um, over here we have a little bit of jimping um, which is good because it gives you additional traction for your thumb. Uh, the jimping is, is good. It's not anything overly aggressive. And if you can watch, see closely, get this to focus. Uh, the jimping is, is not pointy. Uh, there's a bit of flat on the top. That way it doesn't eat into your thumb when you're in continuous use. Um, so remember earlier I talked about the blade seal, which is ATR MOV. Um, so what that is, it's it's really a China budget steel. Um, HCR 13 MOV is really um, sort of the entry level steel that I think is acceptable. Um, it's a little bit on the soft side. So what that just means is you'll be sharpening your knife a lot more often compared to some of the premium steels like S30V or S35VN. Um, or the high-end steels like M3090. Um, with this thing, you, you will need to sharpen it more often. Um, HCR 13 MOV means it has 0.8% carbon, which translates to the hardness of the steel, 13% chromium, which translates to the corrosion resistance of the blade, uh, MO stands for molybdenum, and V for vanadium, 
I have no idea what these two elements do, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So, on the everyday use, it, it just really means that you need to be able to sharpen it uh, every so often using one of your um, sharpening rods. Or if you're bringing it to the outdoors, you can bring one of these pocket sharpeners with you um, to be able to touch it up uh, fairly quickly. Um, it being a soft steel, a couple of passes should be able to get that right back up to razor sharpness. Um, in terms of lock, you can see it's a liner lock, so you can just disengage it by pushing the lock aside and putting down the blade. Um, it has a nice big cutout over here, that way it's easy to access the lock. Now opening and closing the blade, uh, using the spider hole, uh, you can open it like an adult would and just, you know, just do that. You can also spider flick it, I guess. Or you can thumb flick it like that. Now when disengaging the lock, be very careful that, you know, obviously you'd want to take your thumb out of the way before you um, push down the blade. Um, if you notice that uh, this section is a little bit of a safety net for you. So and when you, and if you notice when you disengage the lock and you fold it, it kind of catches your thumb right over there, prevents the blade from, you know, falling down and cutting your finger off. So just be mindful of that. Um, since it is a big cutout, uh, some people have the tendency to push the liner way over here. And if you notice, a little bit of flaw here is it'll miss that guard and cut off your finger completely if you're not careful. So just be mindful of that. Make sure you unlock the liner from up here. That way that um, extra guard, uh, you know, can prevent you from cutting yourself. Uh, one thing I wish that they did improve on this is um, if you notice, it's not flush with the scales. Um, it would have been a lot nicer if it looks something like that, where it's flat and flush, would give it a more uh, refined look and actually would feel better when you have your finger here um, and, and, and you have a better perch for your index finger. Um, yeah, so I just wish they made this flush by kind of reducing the scales over here a little bit to make it um, again, flush with that part of the blade, because if you look at it, this part of the scale actually also hits your thumb when you're opening it, right there. Um, so yeah, this would have been better if they just tapered this off a little bit to make your experience of opening and closing the knife a lot better. Alright, so I guess the last question that I have to answer is, is this knife fidgety? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Knife collectors and knife enthusiasts alike, they, we like fidgeting with our blades. Um, that just means, you know, opening and closing it to no end while we can be watching TV, sitting on the couch, um, attending an online meeting, getting some work done, and we'll be fidgeting to no end um, while doing that, right? So, as you may have noticed, this knife does spider flick well. You just need to put force in that general direction because some spider codes prefer um, the force to go more of the upward direction. This one, on the other hand, uh, works well by pushing it forward. Oops, missed that one. So, try it again. There you go. So yeah, you can deploy it with your, um, like an adult would with your thumb. You can deploy it by spider flicking it. And you can deploy it by thumb flicking it. Um, the action is pretty smooth uh, once you've broken it in. Um, I've had this for a couple of days and I think it has broken in well. Um, it helps to use some lubrication. Uh, I normally use some KPL in the pivot um, when I clean up my knives. So, as you can see, it's not really drop shutty, but it's not bad. You just, you know, shake it close a little bit. So, uh, what I do is I disengage the lock. Let the guard hit my thumb and just give it a little shake. Yeah. <clears throat> so though anyone who thinks a line or not is not fidgety, um, they have not tried using a spider code yet. So yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Overall conclusion. So 
Is this knife a good choice for EDC? I'd say yes. Um, it really depends on... Um, and, and I know that steel might be a big drawback for some of you folks. But really, for EDC knives, you also need to think about what you use a knife for. Um, for someone like me who uh, lives in the city, um, all I really use my knives for are uh, opening packages, uh, getting your Lazada or Shopee packages open, cutting some tape, uh, maybe opening a bag of chips, that, that, that uh, random fruit, maybe once a week. So. Obviously, even this, though this is a soft steel, if you're cutting material that you're really using it for is just cardboard boxes or packaging, then this thing is good to go. Um, if you're more of the outdoorsy type and plan to use your knives on maybe cutting some twigs, some wood, um, maybe some wire, then all you really need to do is bring along one of these handy knife sharpeners with you. Um, that way you can you know, give it a quick touch up when you feel that the edges is getting a little low. But overall, I think this is a great choice for EDC. Um, it's definitely a good um, <clears throat> starting knife or yeah, it's, it, 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 it's a good starter knife for if you want to go into the spider co world um, without breaking the bank. Uh, this one goes for about $50 if you order it from um, US websites like Blade HQ. Uh, locally, you can find this about 3000 bucks, depending on the variant. Um, it also has the lightweight variant, comes out a little cheaper, where everything's exactly the same except that the scales are made of FRN um, and brings the weight down a little bit as well as the price. Um, so yeah, I think this is a great value, a uh, great starter intro into the spider co world. Um, and remember, before you buy your knives, just make sure that you understand your local laws um, so you know what's allowed and what's not allowed in your country. Um, and over here in the Philippines, I just want to remind everyone that carrying of knives in public is generally not allowed unless you use it for work. Um, so yeah, um, that's all I have for today. And Hope you find this review interesting and take care.